very good evening to all our viewers. Today we are very excited to have Rajiv Chaudhary, an award-winning leader in business transformation and value creation. So Rajiv, a very, very warm welcome to you. We are super excited to continue our podcast with you. And we would additionally firstly want to congratulate to you on getting featured in Most Admired Global Indians 2024. Congratulations to you, Rajiv. Thank you. Thank you, Neetu. How are you doing today? All good. All good. I'm looking forward to the podcast and I hope to share some of uh, my great insights, my learning uh, with the audience today. Amazing. We're super excited, Rajiv. We would like to begin the podcast by understanding and knowing more about your journey from Belai to Bahrain. You're born in Belai and you have done amazing and you are doing amazing work in Bahrain. So please take us through, take us through your journey. Okay, let me start with my childhood journey. Uh, it was in Belai and my father was a steel worker. So he used to work in uh, Belai steel plant. I think you are aware of part of uh, Steel yes. Authority of India Limited. And there are many business units. And one of the business units he was looking after was foundry shop. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a huge plant okay. and one small unit, but he was very passionate and very hardworking. So uh, what my dad inspired me was about the hard work and passion it goes together towards success. And uh, okay. he was so passionate that he used to talk about a lot of technological innovations and engineering, drawing and designs and processes even at home. And sometimes I don't get what he's talking, but I know he's talking some sense. And gradually over the years, uh, I actually, my brain got programmed into technology and I, I started to realize maybe this is a career I need to pursue. Technology became your passion gradually. Exactly. And uh, he was so, so passionate that he ended up, ended up coming up with a great idea and innovation which led to import substitution of a major investment that uh, Belai Steel Plant was investing on a foundry shop technology, which was mm -hmm. substituted with a local solution. And that saved crores of rupees for Belai Steel Plant. And uh, it was very inspiring because then he was uh, rewarded by the then Prime Minister of India, uh, P.V. Narsimha Rao, the late P.V. Narsimha Rao. Wow. And thereon, uh, I was very impressed and I was very inspired to follow his path, for, uh, which is engineering. And that's where I ended up uh, into Bhopal, where uh, I studied uh, graduation mechanical engineering. And that's the path that started. Yeah. Uh, so I used to ask my dad, well, what do you think is the best formula, the mantra for success? Yeah. And one, one thing is to always tell me like, like it's like uh, you have seen you, you need to take example from the birds flying yeah so it doesn't matter uh, the direction of the winds and storm and the birds know exactly how to harmonize with different environment different weather and still fly so so that inspired so me so, so true what a lovely lovely journey and experience he has actually shared with you amazing I think this is this is a very important message that I would like to relate to my audience. Yes, we can do engineering and many other studies and, and theories and all that, even the practice. But it's important to align with the environment we work. Yeah. And the, our peers, our staff, our customers, how we align and 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 then we find a way out uh, through emotional intelligence, whatever you call it. Yeah, there are many jargons. But end of the day, it's all about flying, uh, aligning with the environment and driving value for the business uh, you're managing. Right, right. So uh, as you were growing, you have done a lot of your work experience with uh, DHL Express and Tata Export Limited. So what key challenges did you face and what were your learning experiences with them and because they're global giants and you know it actually requires a lot of passion your uh, time energy your motivation because they're absolutely corporate so how was it okay so uh, with, with dhl i've traveled the world uh, so i was based out of uh, middle east for, in for five years i was in brussels uh, working in the global head office of dhl then i was in singapore mm -hmm. for a few years 
so one of my important learning is that we need to first align uh, with the culture, uh, the culture of the people you work with, the business culture. Uh, when you work in Brussels is different. When you work in Singapore is different. Yeah. And I can talk uh, hours and hours about different culture and how we manage. But in summary, the first tough, the first thing we need to make sure we align with the culture. Once you are aligned, once you know the culture very well, the next step is the leadership style. So the style that works in uh, in Europe may not work in Asia. Yeah. So so the second mantra is about making sure you adopt the light, right uh, leadership style. The third one, then you can get into the business model, understand the value drivers and understand what drives profit and growth and all that. Yeah. But I believe the first right. one aligning with the culture, the second one following the right leadership style. And then third is all about, you know, what you learn from engineering and everywhere from the MBA and all the studies and what you learn from different other leaders. Yeah. So you practice it. Uh, if, if you are not aligned with the culture, you don't adopt the right leadership style. You may try everything with best of education and best of all best practices. It will not work. This is what I believe. True, true, absolutely. So what culture difference did you find in, you know, working? And of course, as you mentioned, all these were not at all easy. Uh, they, they required a lot of uh, changes. So what were they, if you could share a few with us? Uh, so I'll, I'll share some example, uh, like where I went out of Middle East when I relocated to Europe. Mm, uh, uh, very important uh, to make sure uh, you work with your colleagues like your friends. So I remember I used to take them to the pubs, uh, which was not a practice uh -huh. always everywhere in Asia, but there after work, taking them out and making sure you align with them, with their minds. Yeah. And the culture is very democratic in Europe. So you have to make sure every decisions you take them on board, uh, take everyone's buy-in. And that's where you need to use your uh, emotional intelligence, empathizing. So this is one contrast. Okay. And then I, when I moved to Singapore and I have to deal with different other countries in Asia, uh, they, they have a different culture there. So uh, it's more, little more, uh, can be autocratic uh, to some extent. It's also, there are some countries which, in India, what you follow is doesn't matter. It may not be applied in Japan, right. for example. Yeah. So, so one of the principle I, I pursued in some of the countries in Asia, which was making sure uh, the track is well designed. So for the followers, mm. yeah, for the staff in those right. countries, make sure you have proper guidelines. And once you have the right. guidelines, yeah. not necessarily you have to have everyone on board. Uh, like unlike in Europe, in Asia, you can still. Uh, have a structured approach with the proper guidelines and everyone will follow like ants. Yeah. So, so that's, uh, I should, should not generalize it for every country, but in general, uh, a, you can follow a very, very disciplined approach, a structured approach with proper guidelines. It works very well uh, in Asia, whereas in Europe uh, it works, but you need to, again, uh, to some extent align with the people, make sure you follow more a democratic approach taking on board everyone's thoughts and beliefs. Correct, correct, correct. So Rajiv, uh, you started your startup at in 2013 uh, by the name Biz Excel. So we would like to know how what challenges were encountered and how did you actually, you know, manage these? I mean, at that you know, after a long experience into corporate, I guess it's not an easy decision to uh, have your own entrepreneurial uh, organization. So how did you get this thought and what challenges did you face? Okay. Uh, firstly, uh, like, you know, I had a great experience uh, with working with DHM for nearly 20 years and traveling around the world. Uh, what I realized, uh, some of the concepts, the best practices that we learned from DHL, I realized that it can be applied for other industries as well. So I wanted to experiment. Yeah. So I thought, why not try some of the best practices which work very well in Asia or, or in Europe? Why not try in Middle East? Yeah. And why not in different industry, for example, oil and gas or banking? Yeah. So, so that, that was my curiosity. And, and interestingly, my first client was not a logistics client. Yeah. 
first client was a bank the second one was aviation the third one was oil and gas yeah and uh, it's all about all about making sure you have a belief system and you know how to add value yeah understanding different uh, business models of different industries sector could be different and uh, for me the biggest challenge the biggest challenge i would say mm. is uh, to build my own brand so when you work with companies like dhl or ibm or google uh, you already carry a, your like the you know, topmost brand global brand and i, I think know. i think the sales uh, stuff selling in those companies is much easier because the brand sells yeah mm. and wh when yeah. i'm on my own and i'm trying to build my own brand it's not easy yeah so that was my biggest challenge however uh, you need to have the conviction that uh, you can make a difference and for me uh, as a like you know consultant or my consulting company to grow uh, my formula was very simple uh, i used to go visit the client and i've been very open so you can try all the McKinsey's or the big four and they are great when it comes to building strategy yeah setting the strategic direction i'm all about exec execution okay. yeah so yes i mm -hmm. i also cover strategy but i differentiate from those big five uh with execution focus approach making it happen so i will spend 20 percent of my time building your group blueprint but 80 percent of my time will be making it happened based on my experience yeah and also the experience of my team members uh, my associates so that's where uh, that helped me actually and uh, when i start to present and start to present my thoughts how i'm going to execute uh, help them turn around uh, help them to transform and it worked very well uh, even though uh, i was targeting different industries yeah uh, so after i left mm -hmm. dhl first one year i was not supposed to work uh, with any competitor of DHL and so I thought okay let me try other industries and in the first year uh, I got three clients from three different industrial sectors so the message is very clear uh, to the audience that uh, what we need to have is the conviction and we need to find our unique selling point so my unique selling point was uh, execution based execution driven transformation right 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 that's amazing you had a you know completely uh i would say going from different direction to a different direction creating your own empire of course uh it's it's quite challenging and you know facing all these challenges and coming uh, ahead of it and I, I, I think now you've been pro at it you're doing absolutely great job so how are you feeling uh, that, you know, okay, fine, this is something I started very late in my career, but I think I've nailed it. Okay. Uh, now I feel uh, I feel very happy, uh, but still uh, not f fully satisfied. The reason is I feel that, okay, when I pick one consulting, uh, a firm to, for transformation, for example, the companies uh, I dealt in last 10 years after I left DHL, uh, it's very fulfilling to see them transform turn around and all that but still you feel that uh, somewhere in some corner of your heart that you you can make a bigger impact uh, by building many more uh, rajiv chaudhary's yeah there are young leaders uh -huh, right. there are young entrepreneurs uh, who aspire to fly so i feel that uh, if i can uh, help uh, or help others other young leaders to transform and and give them the direction and nurture them towards uh, uh, developing many more leaders around the world who will impact uh, not just more many more companies but the community around those companies so i think that that's 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 what is even more fulfilling and i i feel uh, i need to walk that path and uh, that's the reason i uh, launched this company called the value champions and uh, Mm -hmm. The Value Champions is all about uh, developing leaders who are aspiring uh, to be the champions in their own organizations and, and, and the countries where they work. So, so what is the vision behind Value Champions program? Right. Uh, my vision is to give it to the community. Uh, so that, that's very fulfilling, meaning uh, when I see, uh, for example, this part of the world in the Middle East, I see there are a lot of young students 
uh, past MBAs or engineers and doctors. And I see them uh, when they are on the field working. Uh, mm. A lot of them are struggling uh, through the changing company, a different complex company environment, uh, the political environment, you can call it within companies. And uh, sometimes they get distracted and, and they need some guidance. Uh, yeah, how to deal with culture, how to align with different environment. And most importantly, how to follow the right leadership style. Uh, so as I said, uh, number one formula is making sure learn to align yeah, with the culture. Number right. two, pursue the li right leadership style and make sure uh, it is directed towards value creation. So sometimes they will wander around and do a lot of things. Maybe some of them will do stuff which will not create but destroy value. Yeah, And some could be wasting time on things which is not necessary. So how to prioritize, make sure you follow the right path for value creation. So that's why the Value Champions program, I believe, uh, will help uh, different leaders, aspiring leaders to learn uh, the mantra of maximizing mm. value for the employees, uh, for the customers, and obviously, uh, finally, for the stakeholders and the shareholders or the business owners in terms of uh, profit and growth. Wonderful, wonderful. So how do you apply innovative and globally proven methods in your work? This is very interesting. So, so there are, uh, in principle, uh, three phases. I say, when it comes to value creation, yeah. So, like leadership, I mentioned, knowing the alignment, like on how to align with the culture, then leadership, then understanding the value drivers. Now I'm getting to the right. third bit. So on the third bit, uh, it's important. Uh, again, three steps. Yeah, the first step understanding the value drivers so if you don't understand what are the value drivers in a company or what destroys value what drives value how the value flows through the customer through the business processes if you don't have the grip it's very difficult to follow the next step uh, the next step is about maximizing okay. value for your customers very simple it's very as simple as that the first step understanding how the value flows what are the value drivers the second step how you maximize value for your customers. The third step is about translating the optimal or market leading value proposition for your customers to profitable growth. So all the three steps uh, involves different best practices and what I'm trying to incorporate uh, some of the best practices on profitability enhancement, pricing and yield, best practices and making sure how you deliver the best customer experience using for example uh, one of the principles that uh, i am preaching uh, the young leaders is called heart power business approach so how you can make uh, value creation uh, equals customer experience yeah so i will give you one small right. example say you can go to a fast food joint yeah and whichever and then have a wonderful food and then you go to another restaurant I don't know, maybe a French restaurant with three course meal with a nice ambience and yeah, and the chef comes and explain you like in each and every course, how it tastes, how it is cooked, what's the background. And the second option will give you some experience, right? It's not just the food. Right. Uh, and yes. often it's not the quantity that matters, also the quality, yeah? Yes, uh, quantity matters, but quality matters a lot. Uh, and that's where Correct. you deliver customer experience. So, so th th these are the stuff uh, which I cover uh, in my program, uh, which is called the Value Champions, uh, helping leaders understand the path to value creation and uh, also eventually ending up with a series of actions that they can present to their CEO uh, and implement and follow up. So uh, I'm trying to just uh, sow the seeds of uh, innovation and, and thinking of different, I would say, initiatives of, on value creation that they can develop and implement. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Rajiv, for sharing the amazing experience of uh, how beautifully you are taking care of art of value creation and uh, 
the way you're taking it forward very very innovative and very interesting so uh, now going forward we would like to understand your extensive experience in the middle east europe and uh, asia pacific what are some major trends you've observed in the global business uh, i believe uh, the, the first trend would be around technology yeah so uh, you, you can see from i think almost every sector you need to be up to date uh, with the new innovation and technology and ai will play a very important role and i think uh, we started to apply in logistics uh, already oh, and and there is a, i think we are just at scratching the surface it is long way to go and uh, this is one obvious technology the second one is i believe uh, there is greater emphasis on employee mm, engagement um, so how to be uh, the great place at work how to how you engage employees uh, for like you know for giving them the best satisfaction so running employee uh, engagement surveys and uh, there is a belief system i think which is uh, very clear that if our employees are happy uh, our customers will be happy uh, so how to make sure uh, you not just uh, deliver a good customer experience at the same time uh, you ensure your employees employees are happy so uh, obviously this will all lead to uh, great value creation for the company in terms of revenue growth and profitability so these are the two trends i think yes. is very clearly across the board globally uh, it's very i think it's common trends yeah i would say and each each region is different uh, when you say europe is different uh, in terms of the trends there uh and uh, i would say uh, europe is more mature europe and the western markets of us uh, believe much much more matured and uh, there is a young population in asia uh, which is getting more internet savvy and you see uh, e-commerce will play a very important role and uh, for example e-commerce penetration uh, is still a long way to go in asian markets and i can see clearly middle east for example and uh, so this is where i think there's a future where we are heading where we will uh, use more technology solutions for our processes and systems and where you serve our customers and and there'll be greater alignment as we know uh, the internet world and social media world is taking to, it to different direction when it comes to engagement and employee engagement will be very much uh like facebook for example uh, in every company and and everything we do and we chat we talk uh, we recognize uh, great efforts and, and like we recognize the champions within the companies and all that will happen uh, through the use of technology rather than the old style flip charts and you know the wonderful, notice wonderful. boards and all that so, so i think Rajin, these, these are the common trends i see supply chain uh, so globally. we would like to understand about the supply chain trade opportunities you see connecting asia and africa and how businesses can capitalize on these opportunities okay uh, i think the the first thing uh, the businesses are already exploring and i think this is where we need to be very focused when it comes to supply chain is the ease of uh, supply chain like we say ease of uh, business the ease of supply chain how can uh, you extend uh, yes. supply chain end to end connectivity yes. uh, and make it very user friendly yeah and, uh, for our customers so i think you've seen uh, some of the examples in middle east when it comes to airlines yeah how easy it is to connect uh, for example when you fly anywhere in the world fly to dubai is so easy to connect yeah uh, so same way supply chain is right. equally important it's not it's just that it's not connecting uh, human beings but the goods yeah so so you can see the importance of uh, making it easy for people to fly and connect and emirates airlines for example one of the top airlines now uh, is because the country has uh, opened up in terms of connecting destinations same way in supply chain uh, it's important that uh, the the con asian countries uh, like india uh, and i'm sure uh, some of the other countries are very aggressive on this 
uh, area, which is how to make it easy to connect with Africa. For example, uh, should we look at uh, setting up uh, or developing ports, the seaports, uh, the road network, how we connect uh, to make it seamless end to end. Yeah. So together with the governments in Africa, how we work together in making sure there is seamless connectivity. Uh, after connection, the next thing is about the goods. Yeah. Right. So when it comes to Africa, uh, it's primarily we're talking about commodities like the minerals and you talk about the meat, uh, the, the food, and you uh, you heard about the uh, the food security that uh, uh, our prime minister is talking about and emphasizing. And it's very important for most of the Asian countries to make sure the growing population is fed, and not just fed, but uh, with uh, a reasonably lower prices. Uh, for that, you want to ensure you know from where you need to source and how you connect easily at lower cost. So, so I think uh, when it comes to Asia and Africa, on one hand, we need to source from Africa with a smooth supply chain. And from Asian perspective, uh, they are exporting a lot of stuff to Africa and there'll be growing demand in future. For example, out of India, the pharmaceutical goods uh, are exported uh, to a lot of countries, both South and North Africa. Uh, and uh, so we need to understand that as businesses, uh, what is in demand in Africa uh, when it comes to exporting out of Asia. And those Asian businesses importing commodities need to understand what I need from which country, which commodity, and how I make sure yes. I can import at a cost uh, that may, helps me to be cost competitive. Yeah, uh, making sure the right deals, making sure integrate with the value chains uh, of those businesses and work together. So these are some of the, some of my food for thoughts and how we can connect oh, uh, Asia and wonderful. Africa together I, in the best sure interest we are of going to uh, see you at our citizens. Uh, Asian African summit that is going to happen in Bangkok. And we'll be getting to know more about your experiences. And we are glad that you're coming there as a speaker. I'm equally excited. Uh, to learn from other leaders uh, coming from around the world. Uh, also, it will be my pleasure to share some of my experiences and some food for thoughts in terms of uh, how we can connect the bridge between the two continents. And uh, in, in the Middle East, as we speak, uh, there are a lot of activities happening and uh, Saudi Arabia uh, is a powerhouse now. It's one of the fastest growing GDP country. Uh, if Saudi Arabian and India, uh, sometimes India is on the top, sometimes Saudi Arabia, but there's a lot of opportunities I can see. And uh, part of Vision 2030 of Saudi Arabia uh, is to connect the world, yeah, to become uh, the glo global logistics hub. So I'm excited to share some of my insights and I can also explore where we can bring uh, and support truly, truly. businesses we are also to enter this market to the same, and, and, and uh, vice now versa. we would like to know your advice to uh, give to these inspiring business leaders and entrepreneurs who are just starting their journey uh, for the entrepreneurs uh, i suggest uh, i think and i can only share from what i have experienced as entrepreneur uh, number one we need to have a strong strong conviction of or belief system of what I can deliver. Yeah. See, if I know what's my bandwidth, what what I know, what's my capacity, then look at. So maybe I, I know multiple things. Yeah. As an entrepreneur, you might know ten different things where you are you are great at. Yes. You need to think about uh, out of those ten different things, uh, what drives your passion? Yeah. What are you passionate about? And just pick one or two things. Yeah. And then look at out of those things uh, what delivers economic value for you which one uh, you can really drive to be profitable and maybe select one thing which you are passionate about you think you can make money out of it and just focus uh, and insanely focus in uh, towards the path for excellence yeah uh, try and dream big uh, and think how uh, we can reach the excellence uh, with with any innovation, think out of the box, think how I can connect technology, think about the customer, how I can deliver the best experience. 
uh, don't don't just follow what's happening in the market uh, think out and of the box so and and see how i can i can create my and own then usp empowering your some employees most importantly because they are the deliverers they are the ones who are going to actually deliver and then equally uh, working on your own strengths and of course passion as you mentioned because whenever you have passion with your strength and your work i think the sky's the limit you you just going ahead and ahead and ahead right so as we are closing and ending to our 100%. podcast we would like to have a success mantra of yours and so you're so successful you're doing great you have a lot of people around you who are your motivators so we would like to know a little bit about them equally your parents your family your wife and also your success mantra uh, i i have shared some of the success mantras before and i think i have still a long way to go uh, i'm never satisfied with what i have learned i think this i'm learning each and every day uh, i would just cite some examples of uh, great people yeah great leaders uh, i would say Uh, for example uh, one of uh, the great leaders i follow closely steve jobs he's not there anymore but uh, his passion is really out of the world uh, uh, his pursuit for passion and excellence so that's i think one mantra we all need to learn and uh, really see how uh, steve jobs explored the world yeah uh, with lots of stuff and uh, invention the next one uh, i respect because i was also not just um, I, i was part of tata group at one point uh, ratan tata and the leadership and the whole culture uh, that tata is building uh, and developing uh, tata is not just about uh, making money yeah it's about creating value for the community and that's very inspiring and that inspires me a lot and uh, i think i'm just scratching the surface I, i would encourage our leaders to learn from uh, tata's approach and not just think about uh, what we can do for employees and the customers and make money overall as business but think about the community around you uh, how you can go after the green uh, make make the environment green uh, and help the community around so that's the second leader i think uh, i would follow i think is very inspiring uh, and the third one uh, uh, dr apj abdul kalam so our nuclear scientist and also a president ex president and uh, uh, what i learned from him uh, but I, and i still always uh, even i, I tell my uh, son also to follow is uh, he he always dreamt big so we learned how to dream big unless you dream you cannot uh, like you know get there yeah so we all need to learn learn to dream big yeah and out of the box and also uh, learn uh, what uh, i remember uh, dr kalam used to emphasize call fail first attempt in learning so he would encourage yes. people to even make mistakes no problem uh, if you don't make mistakes you will not get there yeah so you have to start you have to start and try different methods so as entrepreneurs uh, we will not be successful always yeah but you can try if you don't try then you have not explored the world so you need to try sometime uh, when you fail you learn from what you done mistakes and and you can then grow up above that and build on it so so i think is it very important for all of us as entrepreneurs uh, to to try and even if uh, mistakes yeah just be convinced of uh, the path you are following not always uh, it will work right because the market can change customer behavior change or many things can change which you could not uh, but at very, least we should keep true. trying and, and truly, until you get to the excellence because- you've actually narrated the entire journey and your success mantras in such a beautiful manner that they are enlightening the actually uh, giving a message to the generations to the youth and to our audience that you know keep following your passion keep making mistakes because until you make mistakes 
you're not going to go further you're not going to innovate new things which are very important because innovation always comes with failures so that was rajib choudhury with us thank you so much rajib for joining us today we had an absolutely inspiring journey with you today and we are amazed to have you here thank you so much what an inspiring journey rajib has shared with us today from bilai to global leadership his insights on value creation and heart powered leadership are invaluable we hope you found this episode and insightful as we did remember success comes from learning and both trumps and setbacks staying humble and focusing on your passion we hope you found this episode as insightful as we did remember success comes from learning from both trumps and setbacks staying humble and focusing on your passions thank you for tuning into the passion vista podcast if you find this podcast of any help to you kindly consider subscribing to the channel for more such content and also do not forget to like and share this video with your family and friends stay tuned with passion vista podcast